over here in the back bay and we are going to check in on project 142 the plaster has uh, gotten a lot more work done glass has arrived and we got a killer pocket door detail you guys have been waiting to see with the all glass pocket door so let's go check it out big day glass has went in in most of the spots and a lot of you guys have been following along this glass pocket door so pat here has been working on this all day got a frosted glass pocket door for this primary bathroom uh, and this is the eclipse hardware rabbit of the jam or date of the jam how slick does that look so there'll be uh, stainless hardware on that for the pole, um, but now it's completely frosted. Like I said, this door goes into a dado in the jam, which might be an unnecessary detail, but it's a nice detail and it actually has a bubble seal in there. So it has a nice, uh, nice feeling close. Uh, and this clips hardware actually, if you can see on this side, the jam actually is lower. So you won't see anything except for the glass. And then looking at the end here, you just have this half inch glass with probably about a five eighths or so uh, gap between it and then your hardware will go on there. So Pat's going to work on getting that wrapped up, which will allow us to blue board that and then finish this primary bedroom with plaster. We also got this glass in. Again, you almost can't even see this one the way it's lit up. Completely clear, buried glass channel on the floor as well as the wall. Loop around here. A little echoey but uh that plaster will go out uh lined up with that glass track and this will get our final plaster now that this glass is in they can do the final plaster that's what we we're waiting on um so now this will be all the waterproof dev lime liquid marble you guys keep asking about it that's the product and then on this side plaster right to the jam so same thing here uh, Pat actually beveled this at like a, maybe five degrees or something and then that plaster will come over and it'll be mechanically attached here with a mesh tape um, of some sort go right over so you have this nice edge right into our baseboard detail you guys have already seen the door detail all the hardware for our um, from Arnie hardware I almost forgot we have our, this, this wall has been plastered. So now we have handrail brackets that will go in and then they'll blend that plaster in. So you won't actually see the escutcheon on the handrail. It will just be protruding out um, to support the stainless steel handrail. This piece of glass is uh, not in yet, obviously. Um, painted all of our uh, in wall track black. So once that glass slips in, you won't have any exposed hardware for that glass uh, and you won't get these weird shadow lines. Got Larry over here, he was working up on the roof deck. Got this glass in for the mono stringer. You can see all the, the attachment points at every single tread. Guys did a killer job protecting this stuff. Um, you know, obviously if we could wait to put this in, we would, but you can see how it ties into our ceiling up here and that is preventing us from finishing the plaster. So that need, these need to go in so we can actually wrap up the plaster. Jump up on the scaffolding here. Our walkable skylight is all plastered in. You, what you're actually seeing is the, the black flange in the multi-layer of glass. When you look straight up, look at that. And obviously we get some snow here in Boston. Go up to the roof. not going out there. Uh, what we're gonna do here is obviously recessed and we did that because of the walkable skylight and you had to have this uh, depression. So this will actually get a snow melt system and we're gonna take some of those porcelain pavers, miter them and do turn downs to tie into the lower portion there. There, we're, there it is. This is what Larry's been working on. So we have steel posts that are around the entire roof system. Actually very similar to those right there, powder coated black. And Larry is doing the first piece of Epe, cutting out all the squares, making them nice and clean. A little round over, those will slip over the post and that will become our curb 
to start the EPE fence. A little shot underneath, you can see how the glass terminates. Got about a little area here where we drop down that glass. There's a lot of thought that went into this. Uh, and once it's all unwrapped, it will make a lot of sense. A little detail here we actually caught is that this originally was kicked back. Uh, and we noticed that this soffit and that soffit were, was different from this one. So we actually built it out, which worked out nice because now it looks like an even horizontal, as, I mean, horizontal and vertical cut on that stainless steel monostringer. And look how that glass just ties in. It looks slick when, once this is all plastered. Hop downstairs, check out the floors. This glass is in as well. Another detail that uh, we worked on is that that glass up here is exactly in line with this glass, which is exactly in line with that glass. So it's almost as though it creates this Z pattern always in the same plane, which is super nice. Again, protected. Now that this is in, this beam will actually get wrapped uh, and plastered. So you have a nice white beam with the, the no hardware on top for the glass. Uh, and then on that side, you just have your skirt board, which is completely flat. Check out what Nick did for the lower staircase. So we have the reglet back there. Well, that reglet set back a little bit further. So we're still gonna have the same shadow gap, but he actually had a company make an LED strip that goes back in here. So what that will do is since we have this staircase, which is the essentially down to the common hallway, which won't be used all too often, rather than putting sconce lighting on the wall or lights underneath this staircase, he was able to light up the whole staircase using this shadow reveal on either side. It will give plenty of light so when you're walking up and down these stairs, you can see, see that piece of glass. One piece, full length, no seams in that, which looks killer. And you can see how it was grooved all the way back here so they dropped it in because they had to then slide it into the channel. Actually, this is a great view here. Slide it into the channel underneath that steel stringer all the way over there. And this right here will get wrapped in white oak, which matches the landing up there. Uh, and you'll get half inch, um, almost like shiplap, but half inch shadow gaps. Uh, so that will look like a giant oak cube, which goes with the oak treads and everything else. This room base coated for waterproof plaster. I just want to address something. Unfortunately, sharing this got a lot of feedback uh, or flack from Weedy. Um, wasn't intended to um, promote something that couldn't be done or or was uh, you know overly complicated. But I guess a few of you guys reached out to Weedy about this tub, uh, and it bothered them. So, uh, like I said, this is custom. This is how we approached it. It might not be by the book, but this is a belt and suspenders, never gonna leak, um, you know, waterproof plaster tub. It's the right way to do it. That's how we went about it. So it is what it is. This room back here, tongue is on site, water popping our floor. So if you guys remember, we had this white wash color on it. He's actually sanded these floors. Look at that detail. HVAC registers coming up through. So yes, our paint line on our baseboard is not great because it's not done yet. So our floors will get finished and then we will actually uh, run a bead of caulking along the entire baseboard with a, a piece of tape. So we have a nice crisp line, paint that, peel that, and you'll have your finished floor below it. But man, I will say if we, did, we weren't going whitewashed, I would definitely like to go natural on this floor. Seven inch wide, white oak. So what Tongue's doing over here is water propping and he will kill me if I walk on it. <laughs> so water propping, what's next step over here? Stain. Stain. How many, and then we got stain and then what? Sealer? Uh, or or pre-color or? Well, stain is just too close and then you gotta do the kitchen. So what, what, what are you saying is stain, we get water prop, stain. Water prop basically opens the pores, makes sure that stain uh, soaks in there real well. 
uh, and then we'll get two coats. But the reason we're doing this while everything else is going on is because this is where the kitchen goes. And rather than doing underneath the cabinetry or, or going up to the cabinetry, we're getting this whole space done, prepped for cabinetry, so they can come in and have this space. Uh, so that's an integral part of getting this kitchen installed. And unfortunately, if you guys remember, paying attention, takeover job, they had, they've had this kitchen for three years sitting in storage. So if we had done this job from the beginning, we absolutely would have. Uh... Let me make sure I put tape. Listen, I'm not gonna walk in there, I promise. <laughs> we gotta get special tape, do not walk tape, you know? Yeah. Um, but they, so they own the kitchen, otherwise we would have built it. So we're gonna work with the uh, manufacturer of that kitchen, make sure it gets installed to everyone's standards, which I'm confident that it will. Uh, and then in here, you can see our invisible speakers have been plastered over. Um, our fireplace is all ready for um, plaster, which will be the liquid marble, which will have a cement look to it. And then we have our access panel. So that access, that access panel acts as a return for the HVAC and access to the mechanical space up, below, up top. Another return over there. And then we have two more over here, access panels plastered in. Yes, that is the one that gets buried that I talked about. This one right here, they now line up. Originally that lower return, uh, we actually ordered a standard size of like a quarter inch too small. Silly mistake, but we made it right. So that one will open up to AV. This one is uh, for service. And then that down there is actually the makeup air. So when that hood goes on, pull, pulling 1200 CFM out, this is dumping um, new outdoor tempered air into the space to create that makeup air scenario. We could not do the hood within a hood here, we tried. And then millwork team, they're building some of these boxes into the cavities that are otherwise dead space uh, to maximize every square inch. These are gonna be for big blankets or big pillows or things that don't get used on a daily basis. You get some more here, another one in here. And those will all get detailed out and actually plastered tight to it. So when you open up, you have a nice crisp white line and then the white oak interiors. Subwoofer goes down here for the, the audio visual. And then we get another one that's in progress on, on this side. So great update over here. Uh, excited to be at this phase. Plaster is nearing complete and we just have a couple weeks left uh, to a point where the finishes start rolling in. If you guys like these site visits, make sure you comment below. Make sure you check out the new series revealed. As always, the Nick Schaefer podcast, the Modern Craftsman podcast. We will see you guys next week.